swipe left, swipe right, swipe 100 times. Do a 200 questions quiz to find out who you should date. Always ensure that your reply is always shorter than his. Play hard to get so that he will value you higher than the rest of the 100 girls that he's currently messaging. Love in the 21st century has reached its height of complexity and confusion. And to add to this complexity, we can now no longer trust what we see. How many of you have this app on your phone? How many of you actually would edit your selfies or photos before you post it online? <laughs> OK, OK, fine, I'll come clean, I do it. Anybody else? <laughs> for those of you who put up your hands, thank you so much for your honesty. <laughs> this is a photo I took of myself a few days ago, and now witness the magic. <laughs> With a few quick clicks, I can actually change the shape of my face, I can put on makeup, I can make myself look a lot slimmer, and I can even elongate my legs. <laughs> you don't believe me? Check this out. <laughs> I can see quite a number of stunned faces in the audience, especially the guys. <laughs> guys, are you getting a bit worried now? <laughs> Recently, a famous dating app actually revealed that in order to make more matches, they would actually not show boy one to girl one, who has a 90% match rate. Instead, they will show boy one to girl two and girl one to boy two. By doing this, instead of matching just two people, they can now match four people. From a mathematical and business perspective, this makes complete sense. However, from the perspective of boy one and girl one, they might feel cheated that they have not been shown their best match. And to make things even more complicated, we can now no longer trust the authenticity of the messages that we receive. When it comes to online dating, now you do have some love scammers on the internet preying on lonely hearts. On top of that, you actually have some dating apps who are creating bots to lure their users to pay. When it comes to online dating, I'm sorry guys, but you guys are a bit worse off because the gender balance is 70% men and 30% women. So imagine David, who is a successful, single, sincere guy who is looking for love online. And when he turned on the app, he received this message. OK, so in order to reply to the hot and gorgeous Jennifer, David is asked to pay. <laughs> what do you think David will do? <laughs> so you must realize by now, David has received many rejections and many non-replies from a lot of the girls that he has been trying to message. So like many guys, he would whip out his credit card and pay, only to be disappointed when he received radio silence. So a quick word of advice for guys out there. Guys, no sane, normal, logical woman would send this message as an opener. <laughs> if you receive this message, is definitely from a bot or a scammer. My husband and I emptied our life savings 14 years ago and started our own dating company. To date, we have arranged more than 100,000 dates. So we have evolved from a pure brick and mortar business to having an online matchmaking platform to having our own mobile dating app date coaching division, and most recently, a lifelong relationship advisor that's based on AI and blockchain. We have witnessed 
the transformation of the dating and love industry. From the traditional dating of face-to-face, one-to-one, to today's digital dating, where singles are reduced to one single photo, to be swiped left or right. And if they do not like that photo, they do not even bother to read that profile description that you have painstakingly written. And chatting has become like mini-dates. Every single question, reply, emoticon is judged and scrutinized to decide whether they would like to continue with the conversation. And you know the answer is a big fat no when you have been blue-ticked and ghosted. How many of you here actually have friends who are single? I see quite a number of hands. I didn't ask you whether you are single, I asked you whether your friends are single. Yep. <laughs> okay, so if you were to ask your single friends why they are single, I bet you their answer is because I have not met the right one. So singers feel that their problem is the meeting problem. They just do not have the time or the opportunity to meet the right one. However, being an industry veteran who has been in this for the last 14 years, I have come to realize that finding the right one is not just about meeting the right one. It's actually also about being the right one and choosing the right one. Are we the right one ourselves? Do we have the right mindset and the right skill set to meet the right one when he or she comes along? Ladies who come to our dating service, they usually ask for a guy who is 1.75 meters. It doesn't matter whether they are 1.5 meters or 1.7 meters. I remember asking this girl who is 1.5 meters, why do you need someone who is so tall? And this is her answer to me. Violet, you see, I want to be able to wear my six inches high heels and still be able to rest my head on his shoulder. <laughs> so, maybe this is what she meant. Ladies, <laughs> you do know that it doesn't matter whether the guy is 1.65 meters or 1.85 meters, this has no correlation whatsoever with whether he's going to make a good husband or a fantastic father. The important question we need to be asking ourselves is really this. When we are looking for our lifelong partner, are we actually focusing on superficial criteria or are we looking at significant criteria? that's going to build and sustain a long-lasting and meaningful relationship. I would know all about superficial criteria. Growing up, I've always been criticized for my looks. My mom friends would say, look at her, her eyes are so small, like two small slits, can't find boyfriend or not. <laughs> look at her face, so many pimples, can't find it. Being overweight, having an acne problem, and having small eyes did not help with my self-esteem. At school, boys come to me not because they want to get to know me. It's because they want an introduction to my prettier girlfriends. <laughs> when I was 15, my best friend, who is a guy, told me, if I'm a girl and I'm not pretty, I would rather die. <laughs> I remember being increasingly upset and resentful. I felt that it was not fair. They did nothing to be beautiful and get all the attention, and I did nothing to look ugly and get sidelined. I eventually snapped out of my self-pity and decided to focus on what I can change rather than what I couldn't change. So I focused on my communication skills, my public speaking skills, my leadership skills, and 
years later, even though I still look the same, but my self-confidence grew and I became comfortable in my own skin. When I pursued my studies overseas, I decided to run for president in a student society. And I remember on election day, I noticed this tall and handsome eligible guy that I met a couple of days ago at a group dinner and shared a cab with sitting behind me. So I turned over and said hi. He looked at me blankly and said, I'm sorry, but have we met? I was utterly crushed. I couldn't believe he didn't even remember meeting me, even though we shared a cab together. But I decided to put on a brave face, continue with the conversation, and kept up with my positivity and confidence. A few months later, we bumped into each other again. And at this point, I was at the rock bottom of my physical eligibility. I was still overweight, and I was suffering from a massive pimple outbreak, and my friends at that point is constantly nagging me about my poor dress sense. And yet, this handsome, eligible guy, who some even say is the best-looking senior in accounting and finance, asked me out for a date. <laughs> Thank you. And three months later, he asked me to be his girlfriend. <laughs> Five years later, he asked for my hand, and we got married. <laughs> the ugly duckling has found her Prince Charming, something I wouldn't even dare believe just 10 years ago. I remember asking my husband, Jamie, why did he choose me? And his reply was, he was attracted to my confidence and my positivity. And I learned that even when the world labels us ugly, we can create our own definition of beauty. Today, Jamie and I have been married, or we have been together, for 18 years, two months, and 20 days. <laughs> Imagine if Jamie and I have gone onto a dating app. Imagine Jamie has seen me first as a photo he would definitely have swiped left. <laughs> Remember, he couldn't even recall the first time we met. I was just not his type. And we wouldn't have met, we wouldn't have dated, we wouldn't have gotten married, we wouldn't have started the family that we have started. We wouldn't have founded, founded a dating company together. We wouldn't have created 100,000 dates. We wouldn't have coached thousands of singers. And we wouldn't have brought together thousands of happily married couples. And today, I wouldn't be standing in front of you sharing with you my story. Technology has successfully brought together millions of connections. However, Dating apps are corporations. The technology that they have created is meant to maximize revenues, profits, app usage, and to keep you online as long as possible. Strange as it might sound, but whether a single individual data succeeds or not, that's not always their number one priority. At our offline dating service, we always ensure that each date is a blind date because we do not want our clients to be judged by photos alone. When you meet in person, 
you are no longer just another photo to be swiped left or right. You are no longer another pixel to be manipulated to be more attractive. When you meet in person, you are no longer attracting just based on your looks. You are actually attracting with your voice, with your personality, with your composure, with your personal story. Use technology for what it has to offer. But do not leave your love life to algorithms alone. Do not get sucked into the vortex of swiping and chatting because dating that stays online stays superficial. Stack the odds in your favour by meeting offline as quickly as possible or explore alternative options for more face-to-face -face encounters. Because what dating apps and algorithms do not tell you is true love happens offline. Thank you and God bless.